Welcome to the World Rally Championship Part 8. As if tarmac, snow and gravel aren't punishment enough, now comes the exhausting heat of Kenya. To many, this 50-year-old competition represents rallying in its purest form. The cars cover vast distances across hard, open terrain, and it's an immense physical challenge. Obstacles to overcome range from flash floods to wandering wildlife. They call it the safari rally, but are the drivers, the hunters, or the prey? All right, so here we go. Time to start the second half of the World Rally Championship. Going to Kenya in Africa for the Safari Rally Kenya. Five stages across three days, and we're going to start with our first stage. Here, 5.2 kilometers. It's going to be dry, and we're going to have a nice, our usual gravel surface. So here are our, here's our default setup for this rally, and let's go. Okay, so here we go. Time to begin the Safari Rally Kenya. Three, and two, I have a feeling one, that um, in this particular rally, I'm not going to have to deal much with wildlife or flash floods or whatever else was said, mentioned in the uh, intro video to this rally. I think we'll be fine. So, here we go. Of course, we have one gears uh, default for this car, so I guess it's going to be a pretty high speed rally. Oh my god, that was a big bump. I was not expecting that bump to uh, upset my car that much. Holy crap. Tight, very tight turn that I took a very, very bad line through. And also maybe a little too much speed as well. I think these are the tightest turns I've uh, experienced so far in a stage one, which is interesting. But no big deal. Oh dear, that was, uh, that was a crazy little chicane. Well, it's good. Oh, okay. I just ran over a uh, local. It's fine. He's fine. He's made of freaking like titanium or something because uh, he didn't budge. He's still watching and having a grand old time. Very uh, interesting little dip there. So, uh, yeah. We're good. I didn't kill anybody yet. They can't be killed. They have nerves of steel, and also bones of steel, apparently. Wait, no, I said titanium earlier, but still, yeah. Jokes, anyways. Just slow it down, try to make it through this 90 degree angle turn. Or this, uh, what the hell do they call that in other rally games? Square right, that's it. It's like it's a square angle, so yeah. Anyways, on to the final sector of the stage. Up the hill, over, big jump. I kind of just tap brakes a little bit in fear. Holy crap. Too fast around the turn. That's fine, we survived. Looks like I got one more corner to go. No major turn to go. So here we go. Advertising boards and finish line. That was a crazy, uh, crazy first stage. Wow. So that, that's a, uh, that was just the first stage. We got four more to go here in Kenya. This is going to be, uh, quite the, uh, interesting rally. If, uh, that was in the indi any indicator. I promise I can speak. No, I can't. Just kidding. So uh, let's just save that replay. And let's check out our stage results after stage one. I take the lead over Didier Oriol. So a Pojo 1 2 for stage one. With Richard Burns, Toshihiro Arai in fourth, Hari Ravanpera making it three Pojos in the, t in the points, and Francois Delacour in sixth. No sign of Carlos Sainz and Tommy Mackinnon. There they are, 10th and 11th. So while they may not be battling for points, they're still battling amongst each other for position. At least as far as the first stage, so... Let's uh, move on to stage number two. It's gonna be 6.1 kilometers, pretty fast, although I see a few very tight corners, so let's go. Okay, here we go. Stage number two. Do I have my headlights on? I can't tell. Too much uh, sun shine. 
Like sun reflection. Couldn't tell if it was just sun reflecting off the lights or if the lights were actually on on the car. Uh, doesn't matter. Anyway, stage two, go. I'm guessing because of, you know, the bright sky and the high visibility that the lights were not on and it was just the sun shining. So, anyway, stage two, we're here at Kenya. Gotta deal with the heat, man, the intense heat as I record this in the winter time. About that. Although for this area. Oh god. I think it's on I think uh King is on the southern hemisphere, so it would be summertime. Here. I don't know. I'm not very good at my uh, geographical location, so uh, don't mind me. Because you see, I'm very dumb. I thought you really need to know is just I'm very dumb. I don't know things that you probably should know. When you reach my age. But enough about that. Let's just continue our stage here. Ooh, this is a tight turn. Barely got the car woed down enough to make it. Ooh, that was a big bump at the uh, sector split. Hopefully it didn't upcut, upset my car too much. Got around the turn just fine. Got a long ass turn here. Looks like Titan's also. Yeah. I was taking too low of a line there. I was kind of getting off the main path and therefore off the grip. Car wasn't really happy about that. Fine. Everything's fine. Let's just take it nice and smooth. Try not to die. I'll say that as I become very scared. Big jump. Slowing down too much, out of fear, and there we go, cross the line. It's fine. I won the stage. Actually, surprised I was the fastest in that last sector, considering how uh, unnecessarily cautious I was. But hey, there we go. So, that is stage two complete of the Kenyan rally, or the Safari Rally. And uh, this time it's. Well, this is an interesting pattern. Pojo, Subaru, Pojo, Subaru, Pojo. Nice. So I can see what the uh, story for this rally is going to be. Pojo dominance. We have three of our cars on, in the points thus far. In fact, we have a 1-2 still going, although Didier only has a one-second advantage over Richard Burns now. And uh, Petter Solberg makes his way into the points in the second Subaru, knocking off uh, Toshihiro Arai. Carlos Sainz moving up to ninth in his pursuit to try to uh, make his way up to the points, maybe gain a little more ground on Mackinnon in the championship. We shall see. But, anyways, on to day two and stage number three, 6.6 .6 miles. This looks like it's going to be pretty straightforward, but considering this, the uh, undulation and stuff, I've dealt with on day one, I don't think that's going to be the case. Okay, here we go. Time to begin uh, day number two of the Safari Rally. Away we go. That was a bang, but with a bit of a whisper. Or whimper. Not whisper, but whimper. Doesn't matter. Just mosey on here. So yeah, like I said, this is gonna be a pretty high speed stage, but oh, jeez, not that high speed. I went too fast. Whoops. Fun fact: you actually have to slow your car down in order to get around tur turns. You can't just you know go flying over them at 120 miles per hour. Fun fact. Once again, still uh, not doing enough to my car to actually like damage it or anything. Maybe, maybe the damage isn't like as oh, severe on the normal difficulty. I don't know. Maybe on professional, the damage is like a little much less forgiving. And I've only played through this game like once, so I don't really know for sure. So, uh, yeah. 
unless, you know, you have prior experience with this game. Just gonna have to take my, uh, very, uh, untrustable word on it. Just believe me. Actually, don't. It's a very bad idea. Right, I heard Titans. Where's the Titans part? Of course, this is also the longest frickin' turn in existence, apparently. Okay, we're good. And we are leading the stage despite that uh, mishap earlier. Another long straight section. Top speed 126, 7, 8 miles per hour. Oh, I was too busy looking at the speedometer. Not paying attention. I was trying to. I was too focused on trying to reach 130 miles per hour that I wasn't even paying attention to, uh, you know, the fact that I was very quickly approaching a turn. Go me. Yeah, this has not been a good stage for me. Oh dear. What is that? Really dark surface. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's like meant to be some kind of like water splash or something. I don't know. I just know it has no fucking grip and it, oh god, slows your car down immensely. Holy crap, what am I doing? So apparently I've forgotten how to drive in this game over the hour that I've been recording so far. And uh, I think that's my fourth stage now that I have not won in this championship, in this entire championship. And, you know, still very dominant. Although this might have been the most amount of time that I haven't won a stage, I'm not sure, but, uh... We still have a Pojo on top as Didier Oriol takes the win of this stage. And, well, there's the rest of the stage results. I actually have a Skoda. Armin Schwartz is, uh... Trying to make a, an effort towards maybe cracking the, uh... Points in, for Skoda. He's gonna get a, have, have to get past this wall of Pojos and Subarus, though. And then... Francois uh, Ford. But, yeah. Although Rovin is uh, starting to move back, so we might only have two Pojos here on the in the points after all said and done. Armin Schwartz only 14, 13 seconds out of the points, so there's a chance for the Skoda driver. As Sainz and Mackinnon, once again, 9th and 11th. Not really in points territory territory. Second and third in the championship. Not really having a good rally here, so. Let's move on to stage four. They got two stages to, uh, you know, make up that time, maybe score a point, but, uh, here we go. 7.6 kilometers, longest stage we've had in a while. So, uh, let's go. All right, here we go. Time for stage four. Second of day two. I just noticed the, uh, the, uh, snorkel that was actually attached to this car for this rally. So, yeah. I guess those, like, dark spots are supposed to meant to be water splashes because, you know, there's, like, the snorkel, which... Is supposed to help stop the engine from drowning. When, like, because of all those water splashes and stuff. So, uh, there's that. There's also that horrible little, uh, flip there. Hold the car again, just because that's just the state of what's been going on. Like, I've just been getting progressively worse and worse as this championship's going on. I'm still absolutely dominating. You know, I've only. Like I said, unless I uh, am missing one, I've only lost four stages. So yeah. Ooh. Pretty tight ass hairpin there. There's where it tightens. Take it nice and smooth. I need to maybe drive a little more cautiously so I'm not going flying everywhere. You know, it's better to lose, like, a tenth or two driving carefully than it is to lose potentially, you know, seconds from, uh, making a mistake, you know, flying off the track and stuff. So, you know. You know, you know. I mean, I'm losing a lot more than just a couple tenths to a Oriole here. He's got a three-second advantage on me here and into a uh, Sector 3 day. I think he's tired of being, uh, of me taking all of every last bit of glory for Pojo, and he's one to, uh, one to prove himself here. Very interesting develop 
development, as I continue to fail to speak. Oh, for some reason I thought the road was supposed to, was going to hook right at some point before that left. I'm also dumb. Oh, cut into his lead there. Two sectors to go in the stage. So we can still steal the win of the stage from Didier. But will I? I'll find out in a couple, you know, a little bit here. Ooh. Stage is definitely being very unfair. Holy crap, okay, yeah, there you go. Not only did I gain the time, I also gained uh, another, like, 12 seconds. Holy ch- okay. Well, it's a good thing I gained that 12 seconds in that last sector, because, um... Yeah, about that. Hey, this one actually I can actually recover from. Ha! Huh, I recovered myself, game. Suck on that. Also, the game knew that I was going to be able to recover, so they stopped the countdown. Hi, how you doing? I think I just hit either a track marshal or a, uh, a just a, you know, a uh, spectator. All I know is that, um, visibility is now a lot worse because I cracked my windscreen. Whoops. That was a horrible, horrible way to end the stage. I still somehow won the stage. I cracked my left headlight as well, broke that. So hey, there is visual visual damage in this game. Just not much of it. But uh Yeah, that was a very poor into that to stage number four, but we'll end up winning the stage by eleven seconds thanks to that one sector. Holy crap. And once again, Armin Schwartz in sixth place. Roven pair of only eighth in that stage, so we might have a Skoda in the points. We do have a Skoda in the points. Armin Schwartz moves up to 6th overall in the rally. But now, can he hold it? He's got only a 3 second advantage over uh, Toshihiro Arai. And only 6 seconds over Roven Para, so it's going to be very interesting. And then, there's Science and Makinen, which are 9th and 10th, but they're way far apart. Science has a well over one minute advantage, and they have no chance, pretty much, of uh, scoring any points in this rally, so... Sucks for them. Also, I noticed Freddy Loix is in 20th. Damn. Talk about a fucking fall. But anyways, time for our final stage of the Safari Rally. It's gonna be 7.4 kilometers, and it's probably gonna be difficult. Alright, so here we go. Time for our final stage here in the Safari Rally. I do like that snorkel that's mounted on the car. I like how, like, depending on, like, the conditions, like, you know, if it's, we're doing a night stage, you know, we'll have the extra light bar attached to the car, get out of the ditch, thank you very much, okie dokie, anyways, yeah. Or, like, here, in Canyon Rally, or Safari Rally, where there's, you know, water splashes of plenty. And I've got a snorkel mounted on the car. That's always really cool. I see, like, little details like that. Like, uh, situation-specific things, modifications added to the car. Oh boy, here's a water splash, even though it's completely dry. Again, I think it's just an implied water splash. Like, it's supposed to be a water splash, but, um, I don't think they, uh, I think Evo might have, like, forgotten to, like, actually program the whole water splash part. So, they just made an implied water splash or something, I don't know. Quick, someone ask a dev that uh, worked on this game. What's up with the not water splashes? And then suddenly in the conversation, Hey, I was a guy who worked for Evolution Studios. Hopefully you can type better than I can speak. You know, I was a guy that worked on development of, of Evolution. Eh, worked for Evolution Studios as this game was being developed there. That's what I was kind of trying to say. Holy crap. Anyways, there's lots of, uh, in air quotes, water splashes in this stage. Lots of them. 
Cool. That's all I really have to say about it. It's just I was acknowledging that there were like quite a lot of them happening so far on this stage. Anyways. Oh shit, better Solberg's fourth in this stage. Maybe fucking Solberg can finally score a point. I haven't actually noticed. Like, I know there's two Subarus in the... Ooh. In the points right now. I can't remember if Solberg is one of them or not. Maybe he can finally uh, get out of last place in the points. Better fucking Solberg. With... Like, even in video games, that's ridiculous that Solberg has zero points after half... Like, the first half of the season. Damn. I wonder who you pissed off at, Evo, at uh, Evo Studios, Petter. Probably should have taken that third gear. Car really bogged down on acceleration there. Out of the turn. Got a very tight right hander here. So we're just the end of the stage and the end of the rally. Should just be a long straight shot here. I say straight. Not very straight, but you know, full throttle. So there we go. I actually lost a little bit of time in that last sector, but it's okay because I gained 16 seconds between sectors three and four. Fucking hell. <laughs> but there we go. We've finished first. We've unlocked fin Finland Rally and the other play modes. And check out our final results so final stage results <laughs> won that stage by 19 seconds over Didier Ariel, Richard Burns in third, Francois Delacour in fourth, Armin Schwartz fifth and Hoffy Ro Harry Rolvenpair in sixth. Petter Solberg ended up falling to seventh at the end of this stage which is interesting so what is our final results gonna be like? Of course I take the rally victory continuing my perfect season. Didier Ariel finishes second with completing the Peugeot 1-2, which is really nice. Richard Burns ends up third. Francois Delacour finishes fourth. Petter Solberg finally scores his first two points of the championship in round eight. Damn. And also Armin Schwartz picks up a point for Skoda. Will that actually give him a manufacturer point? I don't know, because this game is real weird with the manufacturer scoring. So there's your final results of the Safari Rally now. Check out the points. So I hold on to, uh, or I get, you know, hold on to my perfect score. Carlos Sainz and Tommy Mackinnon get shutouts, but they remain second and third. But we now have a new player in the game with that battle for second. Richard Burns is now only three points behind Mackinnon with De La Cour. In just four rallies, De La Cour has went from having zero points to being in fifth place in the championship. Nice, uh. Just sudden surge of performance from him. And Didier Oriol scores another six points, moving him up to sixth overall in the championship, actually tied with Francois. And here's the rest of our driver standing. Schwartz ends up moves into the three-point club. And finally, Petter Solberg scores his first two points of the championship, being removed from that pesky last place. Nice how the we have three Subarus at the bottom of the table of of drivers who've actually scored points. But it's okay, we got Richard Burns in fourth. Flying the torch for Subaru. And here's the manufacturer standing, so. Another 10 points for Pojo, 5 points for Ford to increase their lead over Mitsubishi to 8. Subaru ends up scoring 9 points, moving very much closer to Mitsubishi, who did not score any points, and Skoda gets 2 points for that 6th uh, place finish. Again, not sure why, but they move past Hyundai to 5th place in the manufacturer standings, and once again Citroen. Still no points, unfortunately for them. At least they have a driver point, so there's that. At least I think they do. Now I have to investigate. Yeah, they got they got three driver points actually from Thomas Rydstrom, so... But no manufacturer points. Not sure how that works out, but uh, enough about that, so uh, with that... Eight rounds complete, we got uh, six to go, so thank you for watching, and stay tuned for round number nine of the World Rally Championship.